Coyote Willow. Welcome to our third Miss Adrian read along. Um, Fox is dressed as a dinosaur today um, and I hope you'll join us in putting on a silly hat at home um, so that we can read our third book together and uh, have a little bit of fun. So today we're going to read um, this book. It's called Sir Comference and All the King's Tens, A Math Adventure. It's written by Cindy Noshwander and illustrated by Wayne Gehan. The last time we saw the king, he seemed a bit gloomy, said Lady Di of Amateur to her husband, Sir Comference, one evening. His birthday is soon. Let's give him a surprise party here at our castle to cheer him up. We can invite people from the entire countryside. That's a fine idea, answered Sir Comference. We'll plan a huge celebration for him. Bonus points if you can keep track of all the math vocabulary hidden in this book. Lady Di sent out invitations. Servants rushed about the castle, cleaning and cooking. Carpenters built long wooden tables while seamstresses sewed tents. Guests began arriving in groups. Each day, more kept coming. Lady Di showed the guests where to stay. Rooms filled up quickly. The castle is already exploding with guests and an even bigger group is arriving this afternoon, she told Sir Comference one morning. King Arthur's party is tonight and I am not ready. What a royal mess. Sir Comference nodded. I'll gather everyone in the meadow to get them out of your way. <clears throat> Soon a large crowd stood in the grassy field outside the castle walls. The king will arrive in a few hours, began circumference. Let's practice a royal march of greeting. But everyone stepped smartly toward the center of the meadow. Pandemonium broke out. Knees marching high, knocked into arms, swinging wide. The knights of the round table crashed into each other, falling into metallic heaps. Lady Di appeared in the middle of the confusion. I need to know how many guests will be here for lunch, and then how many for dinner, she called to her husband over the clatter. Circumference waved his arms. Attention, he bellowed. We need to know how many of you are here. But everyone kept milling around. Counting the crowd seemed like an impossible job. We could march in one straight line, said Sir Lionel Segment, counting up from one as we pass. So the group formed a queue. They began moving forward past Lady Di. The line was so long that it disappeared over the hill. That was a good idea to count one by one. Do you understand the problem? Trying to count all the people? Too slow, noted Lady Di. The king's birthday will have come and gone long before I finish figuring this out. And I'm getting rather hot standing here, complained Sir Tangent inside his armor. Others agreed. Let's set up some tents, said Circumference. We can get into the shade while we think of another way to count everyone. That is a lot of people to count. Attention, everyone. Please gather into small groups, as Sir Kell suggested. Spread those groups out into lines, as Sir Lionel Segment described. Each line should have ten people, like the ten fingers on Sir Tangent's hands. Ooh, what are they doing? Mm. Making groups of 10. Can you count by 10s? Yeah. Yeah. The crowd grouped themselves as circumference directed. Lady Di started to count, but there were still too many rows. They go. If we put 10 rows together, that would equal 100. So 10 of those make, 10 tens makes. 100. Yeah, that would make this counting go even more quickly. The hot but patient guests moved into larger formations. I'm counting nine groups of 100, said Lady Di. There are also eight rows of 10 and one row with only seven. That's 900 plus 80 plus seven. Now, at least I know how many lunches we need. That poor chef looks overwhelmed. <laughs> then 25 more people arrived from the small town of Lower Numberton. 
Welcome, said Lady Di smiling. Could you get together in rows of 10? And could three of you join that line of seven to make another row of 10? Two new groups of 10 joined the other eight rows of 10 and made a new group of 100. One more row of 10 remained with a lone farmer and his wife standing shyly just beside it. Oh my, now we're up to 1,012 guests, murmured Lady Di. Here they come from low, Lower Numberton. That is an awful lot of guests. Several more tents of different sizes were set up to provide shade for everyone. To the left of this tiny tent that fit nine people or fewer, the castle worked to pitch a bigger tent. It could hold up to nine rows of 10 or 90. Next to that tent, there was an even bigger one for as many as nine groups of 100. An enormous tent was next for crowds of up to 9,000. We'll serve lunch in the largest tent, declared Lady Di. These are the tents in descending order. As everyone was finishing the last luncheon bites, a cloud of dust appeared in the distance. More guests were coming. It was a huge group from the King's City, Camelot. Greeting circumference, called the leader of the caravan. We're here for the party. The king and his nobles should arrive shortly. Well then, said circumference, rubbing his hands together briskly, let's find a place for all of you. a while, but the Camelot guests were finally organized. They had eight groups of a thousand, nine groups of one hundred, eight groups of ten, and seven singles. Lady Di sent a messenger back to the castle to add 8,987 to the 1,012 uh, 1, guests who were already there for the evening feast. We'll need to put up another huge tent for dinner, said Circumference. Yes, agreed Lady Di, and we could really surprise the king if everyone stayed hidden until his arrival. How do you hide that many people? <laughs> so they assigned each guest to a tent. The meadow became a nightly number neighborhood. There were nine folks in the first tent. There were 90 in the second tent next door. There were 900 in the third tent and 9,000 in the fourth tent. The fifth tent was empty except for a long wooden tables and benches. Lady Di passed out silk scarves to each person saying, the color of your scarf matches your tent flag. Then the entire group gathered to practice their surprise greeting, greeting for the king. They had rehearsed only once when a trumpet blared in the distance. Bum, 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 bum. The king is arriving, yelled circumference. Hurry in your tents to wait for our signal. Bum, 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 bum. Bum, da, da, da. When the king arrived, he had a sour look on his face. It's my birthday, he muttered grumpily, and I've been stuck on the back of a horse for hours. What are all these tents for? I'm in no mood for a jousting tournament. Sir Comference and Lady Di welcomed the king. Your majesty, said Lady Di, showing him to the seat of honor. A birthday greeting for you, said Sir Comference, bowing and clapping his hands. That was the signal that the guests had been waiting for. This is a very big surprise party. They streamed out of their tents, singing and dancing. The king was surprised. His sour look began to turn into a smile. At the end of their performance, everyone lifted and lowered their scarves one row after another, starting with the largest group of 9,000, then the 900, then the 90, and finally the nine. It looked as if a swimmering, shimmering ocean wave had crashed at the feet of the king. He stood and applauded. Well done, thank you, my friends. Lady Di clapped her hands, and now let's eat. After a tasty dinner, the cooks brought out an enormous birthday cake and other delicious sweets. The guests cheered as the king blew out the candles. Then everyone heard the thunder of hoofbeats. Uh-oh, said Circumference. Another group approaches. Their flag shows them to be from the city of Addingmore. <laughs> how many more tents will we need? He wondered out loud. And how many more desserts will that be? Asked Lady Di. I hope we have enough cake. The concept of place value or where numbers lives allow us to make any number using the digit zero through nine. A digit's place value tells it, a digit's place tells its value or how much it is worth. In this story, 9,999 guests show up for King Arthur's party. The number tells us there are nine groups of 1,000, nine groups of 100, nine groups of 10, and nine single guests. 
The guests fill the tents in nightly number neighborhood. The next time you see a big number, try imagining that the digits live in a number neighborhood. Each digit's place or tent is 10 times bigger than the one to its right. So that's kind of like our neighborhood story that we used from math class. Mm -hmm. 10 of these makes one of the other. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So we have the tens place, or the ones place, the tens place, the hundreds place. Uh -huh. What's next? Thousands, 10,000, 100,000. <laughs> As you can see, Fox is in kindergarten. <laughs> Thank you so much, Coyote Willow, for joining us for this book. Um, and we will be filming a few more of these, so we've got some for the weekend. And we miss you all very much, and we can't wait to see you all very soon. And I hope you are doing some reading challenges of your own. Um, you could film a video reading to your pet or your uh, sibling or even a stuffed animal. Um, you can read a book in a silly voice. You can put on a funny hat. Um, all of the above would be fabulous. We hope to see you on Facebook, Twitter, and on our Slack pages. Have a wonderful day.